Hi guys, and welcome to today's lesson. We are learning about the distributive property today. This, it doesn't get a lot more algebra than this, friends. You'll use this the rest of your mathematical career. It's just something good to know. Um, and if you worked on Alex last year, Alex really liked using the distributive property a lot. Okay, the basic idea with the distributive property, if you want to hear the, the definition from the book, states that to multiply sum or difference by a number, multiply each term inside the parentheses by the number outside the parentheses. So what this looks like in symbols, so if you want to do this with variables, um, it looks something like this. You're going to have a variable on the outside of two numbers or variable or a number outside and these could be numbers or variables whatever and what you do is frequently what happens is we can't add the two numbers that are on the inside and so in order to get rid of the parentheses and so we can use all of our associative and commutative rules we have to get rid of the parentheses and to do that we're going to multiply everybody inside by the guy on the outside and I even like drawing the line, so you do a times b, which variable-wise is just a b, and a times c is a c. So you'd multiply everybody that's on the inside by the guy on the outside, and done and done. That's your distributive property. So what that looks like in numbers, just as an example, say if we have 6 times x minus 3, Okay, right, because it's the six times the stuff on the inside. Now, we can't do this math right now unless we knew what x was, which right now we don't. But if I wanted to get rid of the parentheses, I can multiply the six through and do six times x, which is six x, and do six times three, which is 18. Done and done. Now, Eventually, we're going to learn how to go backwards as well, so we can look at these two numbers, notice that they have a common factor of 6, and actually pull the 6 out. So eventually, you're going to have to get good at going both directions. But for now, that's what that looks like. Okay. Now, some things that you need to remember to make this distributing easier is let's remember our rules for positive and negative multiplying, because... We can have a negative number on the outside or negative numbers in here and multiply stuff through. So let's just remember that a positive times a positive is positive and a negative times a negative is positive. Then if you have one negative somewhere, then the answer is negative. Wow, a two, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> just a negative okay right so hopefully you guys remember that um also i don't know why i put this in here but we'll write it down just in case also remember that subtracting is the same as adding the opposite. Okay, so what that looks like, remember we can rewrite something like x minus 8 is the same thing as x plus negative 8. Basically, we're just attaching that negative to the number there. Okay, so now we're just going to do a bunch of examples so you can practice. Now, there is an assignment on mass base. Um, which I actually like better than the book's assignment. In the book, it has you first practice this with all numbers, which is going to feel weird, but, you know, it's a good practice one way or another. So a practice problem like 7 times 10 minus 5. Okay, now in the real world and in order of operations, we would do this 10 minus 5 first. And if we did that, we'd get... 5 and then 5 times 7 is 35. Done and done. But because we are practicing the distributive property, I want you to practice distributing the numbers, the number through. So what that looks like is you're going to do 7 times 10, which is 70. Keep the sign, 
unless because we're not multiplying by a negative, so we can do seven times five is then 35. 70 minus 35 is 35, okay? So I know it feels a little weird to do that right now, but the whole point of this is to practice the distributive property. Okay, um, next one is gonna be with numbers again. Um, you can have the multiplying number on the outside of the parentheses on either side. So you might see it looking something like this. Okay, so you can have the three or the whatever number you're multiplying by on the other side of the parentheses. It still means the same thing. Okay, now again, we could, in theory, <laughs> order of operations tells us to do this first. And because it's all numbers, we can, and that would give us 13 times 3. But I don't, um, we're practicing distributive property, and so we just need to multiply everybody on the inside by the guy on the outside. And so if we do that, 11 times 3 is 33, and 2 times 3 is 6. And again, we didn't multiply by negatives, so we don't have to worry about changing signs. And so then we can do, and honestly, 13 times 3 I probably would have had to write out or use calculator for. But by doing it this way, I actually didn't need a calculator because I know how to do all of that multiplication and then adding it together super easy. So this does give you a way to mental math, which is fine. <laughs> one of those things you can do if you want to. All right, so that's what that looks like. There are several problems on the assignment in the book that are distributing numbers through, and I want to make sure that you actually distribute it through. Excuse me. The rest of them, you're just going to practice with some variables in there as well. So what that looks like is we're going to start with 4 times x plus 7. Okay, now we can't add these two terms together. We're going to talk more about this in the next lesson um, because they are different terms and so we cannot add them together. So in order to get rid of the parentheses so we can do other math with it, we're going to multiply the 4 through. So 4 times x is 4x and 4 times 7 is 28. And done. That's all we can do that is finished. Done and done. Okay. And again, like I said, see, I see this and I want to automatically pull that four back out again. It's weird. The things we do in math. Okay. So some other stuff to practice. We're going to throw in. All right. I'm using my notes from last year and I'm wondering why we can have subtracting in there. So 6 times p minus 5, and do the 6 times the p, and then we'll do the 6 times the minus 5. 6 times p is just 6p, because that means 6 times p. And then 6 times 5 is 30, and we're going to keep the sign because we only have the one negative. Okay? Uh, and there's we can't simplify that anymore right now, so we're done. Okay, now this is what it's going to look like if you have a negative on the outside. Negative 2 times x minus 8. Okay, we have to do the two, negative 2 times both of the numbers. Don't lose your negative. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times, again, remember that subtract is really a negative attached to that number. So really it's negative 2 times negative 8 which is positive 16, okay? If we wanted to do it the long way out, I guess we could do negative two minus and then negative two times negative eight, which would be 16, and that gives us a squinty face. I just kind of didn't want to write that up. So I went a little faster. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's try another one with a negative on the outside. <laughs> negative 3 times y minus 10. We're just going to try this again. So negative 3 times y is negative 3y. 
and negative 3 times negative 10 is positive 30. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, um, we can actually have two variables, and we can have those variables have coefficients, so numbers in front of them, which means we're going to be doing even more multiplying. Okay, so what this might look like, we have 5 times negative 3x plus 5y. And we're just going to multiply the numbers and the numbers keeping the variables. <coughs> Tickle in my throat. All right, so we do 5 times negative 3x, so that's 5 times negative 3, which is negative 15, and keep the x. And then we'll do 5 times 5y. Five, 5 times 5 is 25, and we keep the y. Okay, distributive property. Now, um, let me make sure I'm just covering all of the... We got negatives, we got negatives. The variables like can be anywhere in this process. Um, you, we can also have a fraction anywhere in this situation. Um, so for example, we could have one third times x minus six. And uh, the pattern still continues. So one third times x is just going to be one third x. And then one third times six, that minus will stay there. And it becomes six thirds, one third x minus six thirds. Six divided by three is an actual number. So we can write it that way. And that would be the most simplified form of that situation. So there is one, at least one in the book and at least one in the math space that looks like that. Okay. Um, all right. I think that's it. Good luck with the story problems. And let me know if you have any questions. Bye.